Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Cook Cook Crochet. I'm Sandy. Thanks for coming back. I'm going to try not to talk too loud because I fed the three bears and now they're all sleeping. That's what bears do. You feed them and then they hibernate. So I am fresh off my tour of yarn crawl. This year, yarn crawl was a little bit different. If you don't know what yarn crawl is, it's just like a bar crawl or a pub crawl, but instead of adult beverages, you buy yarn in different yarn shops. So because there's not like a street where there's plenty of yarn shops all in one block or within three blocks, there's a lot of driving involved. Sometimes we're going a couple hours north. I'm in the Chicago area, so that's Illinois. This year, I didn't go to all the stores like I did last year because of COVID. It's very difficult to get into the stores. First, you have to wear a mask. Second, they only allow a few people in at a time. Some places even want you to call before. There's at least a doorbell that you ring and then they let you in and then they give you a pump of hand sanitizer. You have to wear your mask covering your nose and your mouth. Then you could go in. I was able to film a few places and I will show some clips in this video. For the 2019 crawl, I made a video about that just a couple months ago. So I will link that video down below so you can see all the stuff just how it was different. So there's about 20, maybe 19 or 20 stores in this area of Illinois that are participating in it. And usually you get a paper passport, but this time it was a passport that you had to download on your phone. And usually they would stamp your passport. No, not this year. So less contact, you know, the better. The first thing you do is you get your bag. So a couple weeks before the crawl, you pre-order your bag at your local yarn shop, L-Y-S. This year, the, this bag was like a teal color. And as you could see, I don't have all of my buttons because I didn't hit all of them. I only got, I only, visited five this year and I still like the bag. It's an okay bag. I thought I thought it was more sturdy, but it's very uh, it, it's a very thin bag. Good enough to put your whip in, but what I used my bag was to put the yarn that I bought, I put it in this bag because some stores will give you a discount if you don't get a bag. Some stores will like donate a quarter to the forest or something if you don't get a bag. They're locally owned, you know, mom and pop stores. They're not corporate owned. I tried to patronize every one. In fact, I did patronize every store that I visited, but not last year, because how can I buy yarn from 20 stores? I, I just couldn't do it. It was fine because I was with a group of friends. There was a lot of people in every store each time. It didn't look so bad, me walking in there and walking out without buying anything. This year, because I was by myself and not a lot of people in the store, you can really notice somebody walking in the store and then walking out. It's just insulting for you know one customer to go in and look around and then walk out. I did buy something from every store. So the first store that I went to was my local yarn shop. And that's this guy, this button right there. So this store is called Llama Llama Ding Dong. I got my bag there and I bought this ball of yarn. This, it's called Cascade 
Yarns Pacific. This is a very nice ball of yarn. It's a hundred, no, I'm sorry. It's 40% super wash merino wool, 60% acrylic. It's a hundred grams, 213 yards of yummy goodness. This is such a nice color. Now the color, it just says color 96, but as you can see, it's like a green, such a nice, like it's got a shimmer to it. Oh, this is so nice. So I got, I got that at Llama. Then I went down to a store called Yarn Hollow. That's this guy right there. Hey, hi. What's your name? I'm Bree. You're Bree. This I, is Bree with the mask. I work here with Jamie, yes. Oh. I made Jamie start knitting. You're an enabler, huh? I am. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not mad either. Oh my gosh, look at these little bags. I'm a sucker for bags. This is this is the sign, a sign of our time. Right. Look at this. Masks over here. A wall of needles. This. Okay, this is what I'm getting. Do you guys do the Swiffer thing? The Swift? Oh, yeah, Are we you, can wind. you there's, okay? There's nobody here. We can wind it okay. Only during the See, they they use this little gadget to put the yarn in, and then it comes out in this pretty cake. Yarn Hollow. I like that store. I was in there for a while. That store. I have a few balls of yarn from that store that are so pretty. I have yet to use them because it's just too pretty to to use. I compare it to a fresh snowfall on a long area of grass and so when the snow falls it's like so nice you don't want to mess with it uh that's some of the yarn that i got from that store is like that but this ball of yarn it's a cotton yarn brand name is plymouth yarn it's a hundred percent cotton mercerized cotton so it's, it's dipped in in a chemical to make it stronger you use them for dishcloths or a tote bag. I like this ball of yarn because it was a different color. It's just, I like this color. So hopefully it won't sit on this yarn for too long because it's so pretty. Okay, so the next store that I went to, it's this guy right here. This place is called Idea Studio. <music> the businesses that had has been established for longer than most of the local yarn shops. Some of them are a couple years old, these yarn shops, but Idea, she's been there for quite some time. She was actually my first yarn shop that I've been to since I picked up a hook. Uh, I've never been to yarn shops before, and that was my first one. And what, what I bought at Idea Studio was a ball of yarn, a hank of yarn. It comes in a hank. Uh, I'll show a picture of how it looks in here. And then they wind it on something called a swip. So it kind of mimics, a, you know, in the old fashioned days, the man would hold his hands out like that and the yarn would be around his two arms and the woman would wind it into a ball. Well, they have a whole, you know, contraption to do that now. So, but this yarn, it's, it's part cotton, part bamboo, part silk. And so I think in, it's pronounced kobasi, kobasi. So cotton, bamboo, silk, and then plus, because it also has some nylon. So it's 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 8% silk, 21% elastic nylon. And 
Boy, I really loved working with this yarn. This is made in Taiwan uh, by a company called Hiku or Haiku. I don't know how to pronounce that. I know exactly what I'm going to make with this. I will show you. My first yarn that I bought from that store was the same yarn and it was this color and I made this and oh my goodness this is so soft this is really really soft this is a cowl and oh my gosh this just classes up any outfit of course not this junky old shirt that I have on my Chicago shirt but I, I really like that so I can't wait to get started on that one okay the next store that I stopped in was uh, this this shop right here it's called yarns untold yarns untold <music> is also a new store that store was colorful they had all their their walls of yarn was so neat and pretty I just didn't want to touch anything but I did find actually bought two things from there two of the same yarn this is a very different yarn not this is something you're not going to be able to find in Hobby Lobby or Michael's and Joann's and that's what I wanted to get during my yarn crawl something i can't buy anywhere else just like when you go out to eat you don't want to go out to eat and get spaghetti because you can make that at home right well why go to a nice yarn shop and get just an ordinary yarn i wanted something different this is called lana ghetto i think that's how you pronounce it but it's camel hair people it's camel hair i got a red one i got a blue one I've never seen any yarn made with camel hair. I've heard of it. I know that you make yarn with alpaca, yarn with, you know, regular wool, sheep's wool. I know they make yarn with rabbit hair and goat hair. I think that's, is it argyle goat hair or is that rabbit? What's goat hair? I can't think of it right now. Angora? No, that's rabbit. Angora is rabbit. You're going to see a lot of edits in this part because I'm stumbling. All right, so this is, this ball is 50 grams. So 50 grams, 50 grams. It's 60% extra fine merino wool and 40% camel. So I don't know what I'm going to make with this, but I think this is going in the, you know, this is my collector's item section. I don't know. That rainy day will come. The last store I visited was, so that's the pin, and that's Woolen Company. <music>
company is a far farther place. I think they've been in business for quite some time. Not as long as Idea Studio, but they are um, a cute little shop in downtown St. Charles, Illinois. St. Charles is finally on the map now because we have a Wahlburgers. And just the other day, Donnie Wahlberg was there because he lives there. And he was there and he's going to be there uh, almost every day because he's said he's got nothing else to do so he's gonna be there talking to the customers so maybe maybe we'll stop by again but every time we go to St. Charles we visit Wool and Company and every time I visit Wool and Company I get the same kind of yarn I don't know why they have this yarn at other local yarn shops but for some reason I go to Wool and Company and I just I'm drawn to their wall of Malabrigo yarn malabrigo now this is this yarn is from peru this is how the yarn looks once they roll it up video down below so you could see the difference between this year and last year. I mean last year's I made the video just a couple months ago but I made it about I made it about last year's crawl. All right everybody I'm gonna hop out and continue my chores. Like I said I told you I fed the bears. That means there's dishes waiting for me to load the dishwasher with some pots and pans that I can't wash in the dishwasher. So I will see you next time. Take care and stay safe. Take care, everybody, and stay safe out there. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe.